Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back. Clumsy flying today. How's everyone doing? Thanks for joining me on the stream. <clears throat> been waiting for this. I have been itching to fly ever since. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Couple of uh, familiar faces in chat. Thanks for being early bird taking the first on the list. How are you, man? Freddy, how's it going? What have you been busy with? Hey Tom, glad you made it. Did you manage to do that flight beforehand? <laughs> hey Alex, are you as excited as I am for tomorrow? <laughs> How are you guys doing? Hey Patrick, goodness, 18 months all in a row like a pro. Did that actually rhyme? Thanks for joining. Thanks to the Reese of Man, appreciate it. Glad to have you here as always. <clears throat> you joining the convoy tomorrow? So for everyone who's watching, Jack is streaming tomorrow and he'll be doing a convoy. Don't ask me about the exact time, but uh, join the Discord server and we'll discuss it more. Baseball game app, no worries. All good. Yeah, exactly. I always have that problem. Not enough time for flying. So for today, guys, we will be staying in the Philippines. I'm really enjoying my time there. Created a whole uh, new FBO network. Actually, let me show you. So still flying with on air. We have a couple of FBOs here. 73 now in our VA, in our virtual airline. And a lot of them are in, actually they're scattered. We have some in Alaska, so you can see the AK in here. We have some in the Caribbean, in Europe, in Hawaii, in North America. And the latest one that I created is in the Philippines, this one having PH. So we have a couple of airports in here now. And we've started exploring that in the past week, in some of the videos, in the stream last week. And today we're continuing that. We have, um, yes, last week we flew with the A320. This week, we'll be flying with the CRJ. Because after I flew with the A320, I kind of craved for more and went back to the CRJ and had a lot of fun with it. So, uh, let's see. Let's see how that goes. Now, um, unfortunately, we will be starting off in a very weird situation. I kind of landed myself in trouble because I created a specific FBO here, Romo, Romeo Papa Uniform Tango to Gigarao, um, which is a quite a small airport, size three though. If you look here, if that's that might be small, but it's size three, and it looks okay enough. I mean, you know, um, it looks decent, uh, long enough airport that. Uh, small airliners should be able to take off from it but i did not take into account that there is apparently no approach here at all there's not even a tower frequency so normally i guess commercial uh airliners shouldn't be landing here is what i'm guessing <laughs> i'm guessing this was built more for uh ga planes but i found a flight going here so this is where we're starting off in, and I'm not sure how to make this work. We'll have just we'll just have to wing it. We'll see how it goes. There are some nice jobs from here though. If you look at FBO queries, we have. If you look at the jobs here in Tugigarao, uniform tango. That's the guy. Vo uh, yes, uh, that's called Volanta. I believe is what you're referring to, Tom. It's nice, it's nice. It tracks your flights, it tracks other people as well in the same area. Pretty cool. Alright, so let's see. We have a couple of jobs here. We have some very nice high paying jobs. If you sort this by price, you can see this guy is paying 692. That's the, that's the highest one I've ever found that has a load for the CRJ around 14,000 pounds here. 
and that's because it's it's uh, has that uh, uh, that guy there that icon doesn't really change anything for thunder it just says cannot be flown by an AI pilot but in the thunder world there is no AI pilot at all so okay that just means extra pay and then it's fragile so you can't do like sharp bank angles and whatnot so here we have and it's high paying because of those two icons and because it's expiring in 10 hours so if we hover over the pay here we see that the base pays for 100 but there's a last minute bonus of 285,000 making that a whopping 692k gross payment so uh, i want to take that although it's going to take us to a familiar place in back in puerto princesa <laughs> where we started in the last stream but at least this time we are landing there so that can be a thing this other one can also be a thing but let's see so what i like to do next is sort this by heading just so i can group together more or less all the jobs going to the same place because maybe i can take even more jobs going to the same place like these guys you can see all of them are going 201 degrees same distance and if you drop that down you see the exact airport it's going to so in particular we can take this guy right this guy which pays 692k and in addition we can even take this guy nine first class passengers paying an additional 95k so that combination going to the same airport and now our payload should be able to handle that so that's perfect actually so i might get that the alternative is a different one it's going to uh, davao mm, it's a bit far i think i like the puerto princesa more and then when we get there we can decide if you want to do one more flight if you have time or maybe take the turbo arrow for exploring Palawan, especially Coron, this area right here. Very scenic, nice beaches, very famous in the Philippines. <clears throat> hey, Justin. There you go. Awesome. See you in Discord, man. That's the easiest way to get it because it's not publicly advertised normally. Okay, so let's get that job. And then let's get the other one with the first class passengers, this guy. And while that's going, let me load up the sim here. So while that's loading, we can plan the flight. So what I need to do is load up in Togigarao, right here. Yikes. Uh, oh, we do have, we have two gates only for GA but I hope that's enough space for us weather conditions are not the best either okay fine we can make it work and with the CRJ thankfully we don't need to change any of the weight and balance in this screen we can just load things up and then the weight and balance the fuel and the weight uh, the center of gravity and all those details we can tune in the actual sim itself when it's loaded in the EFB so let's load that up and see how it goes. <laughs> Close enough, Alex. <laughs> you nailed the Discord command though, so that's great. <clears throat> oh yes, yes, that's the great news. Xbox X and S series, or Series X and S, is that the official name? Coming out on July 27, guys looking forward to that not because of the xbox release itself but supposedly there is an update that comes with it for the pc which introduces all the optimizations they've done to make it work with the xbox all of those optimizations they will also apply to the pc so we should have a much better experience on the pc when that update comes out that's the idea that's the goal if that really happens we will see <clears throat> Yes, the A32NX, that's what we flew with last week. Although we flew with a more advanced version because the one in the marketplace is the stable version. It's a bit too bare for my taste. The development version is a bit better. It's a bit more uh, developed. So that's what we flew with yesterday. Oh, let me just align that. And this is not uh, track IR. I need to center you and pause there. There you go. I have to constantly change the mapping when I switch from my yoke to my hotas. Maybe I need to download VJoy. 
All right, so that's loaded up. That's good. You got the stable version. Yeah, it's stable, but in terms of features, uh, not a huge fan of it. It's still a bit lacking in the system's point of view. <clears throat> but we'll see. The fly-by-wire team is doing an amazing thing, continuing to develop that, and so many contributors. So hopefully, eventually, it gets to that uh, stage where it can be called study level with quotes. All right, so we have weights here. Uh, we will not fuss with that for now. Let's open all the doors first. Are they there, there they are. GPU is connecting. Don't stay too close to me, bro. Still trying to maneuver himself. That's okay. You can do it. You can call in the luggage and the catering. Load stuff up. There you go. Oh, look at that guy doing a maneuver. <laughs> Fast and furious maneuver under the plane. Why not? All right, let's let that load up. Let's see here. Let's load up the plane in on air. Uh, this guy right here. So that's the job we took, as well as this one. So that amounts to 14,000 pounds of cargo and 9 passengers, okay? Uh, we'll need to take note of that because the next step is going to Simbrief <clears throat> and, uh, and uh, plugging those values in. And of course, I forgot already and it looks like it's storming. Um, from Tuigarao to Puerto Princesa. <clears throat> with the CRJ looking good so we have this is where we put that passengers would be 9 and cargo would be around 14 tons uh, 14,000 pounds rather so around 14.1 to be on more the more conservative side right and then the route would be the following Nomioto whiskey that looks pretty familiar Looks like we'll be flying over Manila as well. My goodness, the storms here, huh? Doesn't seem like it's very reflective of what's really happening outside though. That's still a constant problem in the sim. Too many storms. Though that has been toned down a bit already before, but still not enough, I think. Alright, let's see. So it does recommend that we get 10,784 pounds of fuel, taking into account the entire flight and also enough flight to reach the alternate in case we need it, in case we need to divert. So let's go ahead and put that in. It does say 10,784, so I'll uh, fuel up here. We don't have our own fuel in Tugigarao yet, it's still loading up. So 10,000 plus, of course I forgot again. 10784, there you go. 10784, there you go. So we have 10896 here. And that looks good. So for that, we can validate the fuel and payload, let that load up, refueling and loading up the passengers. And that looks pretty good right there. All right. And then I'll just need to take it on the other screen. Looks like a helicopter. Payware mod from third party. Uh, oh, you mean that or the one from Orbix? There's a free f version of that same plane in Flight Sim.2. Yeah, that's one, the Edgeley Optica. There's a free version of that in Flight Sim.2. I'm just not sure which one is better. I haven't tried either. But yeah, you, you maybe you can start with that free version. Now let's see, do we have any, I doubt there, I don't, we have flights here, I'll just invent a number. Hey, super, 10 months, oh my goodness, time flies, huh? Thanks for joining, man, how are you? Glad you made it. 20. That's okay, the payware might be better. 
Just going to invent a number here. I'm just loading a pilot to ATC. Alright. So let's have a check if the sounds are working. No, it doesn't seem like it's working. Alright, we'll have to... Yeah, that's one of the problems with the voices I'm using. It's not consistent, so oftentimes I have to load Pilot ATC multiple times for it to work. Yeah, flightsim.to. That's the website. And then there's a search bar there. Thank you for following. Welcome to the channel. <clears throat> Feel free to join chat. <clears throat> Let's get the discussions going. Right, well that's all loading up. Let's go and see how the job is going here. Alright, oh peace and quiet. Papa Victor Papa. Alternate would be San Jose, which is 200 miles from there. Ah, uh, looks our, like our co-pilot is lacking off again. I'll have to fire her and rehire her. <laughs> Just like last time. I really hate that mechanic of this on air stuff. Too realistic, having rest times and whatnot. No rest for the wicked. Give me a few seconds here. Fired. <laughs> you can see in the lower right of the screen. <laughs> no re super. Thanks, man. Appreciate your company. Happy lurking. Okay, that. Tone is for pilot to ATC connecting. One sec. All right. Not even sure if we will have enough runway length to take off with this, but I hope so. Keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see. Nice, Tom. Great to hear. Enjoy. That's a whole new world out there. Currently, all the mods in there are free, but I think Plum shared recently that they're planning to add some payware stuff in there as well soon. Oh, still not working the voices? What the heck? Yeah, still not working. One more time. Okay. So that's running. Let's go ahead and power up the plane here. Have lights, hydraulic. At this point, flying so much with this plane recently, I actually don't open the checklist anymore that I made. Most of the time I get it correctly. I hardly miss anything anymore. <laughs> Practice makes perfect, getting close. <clears throat> and as I say that, I'm sure I'll miss something this time. Just to change it up. <laughs> okay. Victor Papa. That's the one. Fly. Right. Pause in it. Let's go ahead and program the FMS. Uh, airport. Not you. Oh, you can copy the FMS position. Interesting. I love that clicking sound. ASMR. Copy the coordinates from GPS1. Paste that here. Looking good. Alright, let's load up Pilot to ATC again. See if this time it works. Hey, Bunky. Yeah, it's great, man. It's still my favorite airliner here. Although, I think that might change soon. I put a link in the Discord for Fabio's Twitch page. If you haven't uh, seen him yet, he streamed the upcoming DC-8. Uh, sorry, DC-6 from PMDG. I am excited to learn all about that plane because I know nothing about it at the moment. It looks as complex as it can be. And uh, based on all accounts so far, it's going to be one heck of an airliner. It's uh, putting the study in study level. Oh, come on. Still not working, the voices? Oh, that's not it. Hmm. I'd have to do something else to kickstart it. Let's see. Uh, 
Let's see if this one works. Hi, Captain Clumsy. <laughs> so there's a there's an app called Poly Player, and then you can choose the Amazon Poly voice and just type anything in there, and then they'll they'll say it in that voice. <laughs> That's hopefully kickstarts the whole loading process. Hi, Captain Clumsy. <laughs> we'll see if that works with Pilot the ADC. Okay, let's continue programming the FMS in the meantime. Victor Papa. But yes, until the DC-6 becomes available for us, I think the CRJ is going to be a great warm-up. It's as manual as we have right now. <clears throat> Alright, so that's the flight plan. Uh, departing from... Hmm, what are the winds saying? 225 at 1. Nothing really preferred here, but I think runway 17 should be just perfect in the direction of flight that we're taking. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, you do so many things with that voice thingy. Very convenient. Okay, let's see if this time it works. So I'll play that. Hi, Captain Clumsy. Right before I try and test this from pilot to ADC and hope that it gets a like a kickstart. This is Amazon Polly. Uh, see US how English. it works. Matthew, <laughs> standard. I will be your Hattest voice for the flight. I'm not sure if that has any scientific evidence there, scientific proof that it's working, but I like it. it it's it's good enough. This is a test of the radio system. You are tuned to Manila Center on one one nine or decimal three. Okay, good. So let's copy the route here. Let me switch pilot to ATC in this page. Paste the entire route from SimBrief. Just remove the runway information. Yeah, that should get imported correctly in there. And then I'll go to the ATC flight plan page so I know the ground speed that we are planning on cruising at. That's 453 knots at flight level 380. And I'll plug that in 453 at flight level 380 okay that looks good someone live on facebook last night st paul minnesota 9 40 at night um in real life or in the sim because in the sim you can easily change that right all right so with that we can then validate this and then file and then what ATC will do, pilot to ATC will do, it will load any SID stars and approaches that are appropriate for our um, flight plan. And then from there, we'll know what to plug in in the FMS. So it looks like we'll be using runway 17, Nomio 2, arrival ILS 27 with the Puerto Princesa 1 transition. Okay, looking good. We can work with that. <coughs> Ah, driving around the city live. Interesting. Okay. Runway 17, that's the one. And then about the routing, let's just plug in those waypoints. So from runway 17, we go direct Diera. Then join the Whiskey 271 airway. All the way to Cabanatuan VOR, that's Charlie Alpha Bravo. And then on to the Alpha 461 airway. All the way to Manila VOR, Mike India Alpha. And then from there, Mike 646 airway to Nomio. And from there, we will be joining the arrival, the Nomio 2 arrival. Looks good. So that execute arrival uh, ILS 27 with the Puerto Princesa 1 transition joining the NOM 2 arrival right there. Okay, perfect. Let's review the legs page here. Oftentimes there will be duplicates. Yeah, that's a bit, mm, there's a bit of bugs there still, but we can make that work by just pasting over the NOM, you know, connecting them. There you go. The discontinuities sometimes are normal, but that in some cases they're a bit excessive. So here, like here, we have double the Puerto Princesa 
waypoints in there but it shouldn't hurt it shouldn't hurt i hope that looks good okay it's fine we go to perf in it we'll be cruising at flight level 380 today execute and from there these weights of the aircraft we can actually use the performance chart here and we can plug in whatever sim brief is saying so if we go here and look at zero fuel weight that it's planned for us it's 60,541 so we can simply plug that in here exactly that will change the weight and balance in there and then the fuel would be what was it 10,784 that's the guy right so using all the exact calculations from sim brief gets us a much more much safer flight there you go set payload twice make sure to click that twice uh, for some reason it kind of optimizes it the second time set the v speeds as well v1 vr v2 and all the other v speeds that we need to take note of all right that looks good on air looks good as well because we put in the fuel and the payload and sync that with the sim it updated and now it's accepting that I unticked auto set here so on air doesn't uh, change that automatically so only the sim can change the payload and the fuel and then once that everything is checked we can start tracking and from there we can now proceed with our flight looking good there okay good now as I mentioned this airport interesting enough doesn't have tower so we shouldn't be even be here in the first place, but uh, let's hope the boss doesn't find out. Oh wait, I'm the boss, supposedly. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do an, an exception in this case. All right, so now that we've synced it, the weights are synced with the EFB, what we put in here and in the FMS. So that looks good. VNAV setup, we don't need to change anything there. Transition altitude is 11,000 here in the Philippines looking great there and we are good to go in the fms side of things put the legs page in there hydraulics set all to auto cabin pressure the uh the uh landing elevation here is i think 70 if i remember correctly 20 40 60 80 and that should amount to the landing elevation 80 that should be good enough and then we put the windshield Heat to low. Yes. No smoking signs, seat belt signs on, and arm the emergency exit lights. From there, we engage the stab trim, knock trim, your damper because the iris is aligned, and that should be good to go. From there, we can close the doors. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of okay, the good. captain and crew, welcome aboard this flight. We hope you enjoy flying with us. Before takeoff, we would like to encourage all passengers to watch our cabin crew Start the display APU. the safety features of the aircraft. And let us get our clearance from center. Sepu 543 ready to copy IFR clearance. Sepu 543 is cleared to Romeo Papa Victor Papa as filed. Expect departure runway 17. Climb and maintain 4,000 feet. Expect higher clearances 4, 2 minutes after departure. Low. Squawk 3262. Sepu 543 is cleared to Romeo Papa Victor Papa as filed. Climb and maintain 4,000 feet. Expect higher clearances 2 minutes after departure. Squawk 3262. Zepu 543 red back, correct. Contact us for IFR release when number one for departure. We'll contact you for IFR release. Zepu 543. It's good. QNH here is 1010. Let's adjust that as well. Get some lighting in. 1010 good morning at channel 41 Mr. Never Chief 40 Channel 41 control good morning radio protocol for ABS Okay Looks good there I think we're ready APU is also available looking good Turn on our air conditioning packs get some 
cool air in here. And now we can get rid of the GPU. Fuel chocks can be removed as well. And we can be starting our pushback now. Soonish. Let's turn on track IR. I don't often fly with track IR anymore in this plane, but it is a bit more immersive, if, even if it's just a tad less convenient. Right, release the parking brakes. Let's go. Reverse. Don't forget the beacons. Fuel pumps on. Engine 2. Start it up. So runway 17 should be that way. So we should be turning to our right here. Looking good. N2 is climbing. So that gets close to 20%. Introducing fuel. There we go. On air detected that the engines have started. So it's now starting the flight. Looking good there. That looks good enough. Stop. Let's turn on the parking brake and the tug can go off. Thank you. <clears throat> right. Now let's set the other things. Flight director would be on. Heading would be around 170 since it's around 170. Please the this airport doesn't have, even have any charts, so I can't even use Navigraph for it. Start engine 1. Well, that's going. Take off trim 7.5, 7.5. Looking good. All trims are in the green. Controls are... I hope free and correct. <laughs> we'll test that out later in more detail. No, 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 no. There you go. Turn off the flight director again. There you go. Just reset that. Introducing fuel. Let's go and check the flight controls. So this guy. And that's where we can check if the controls are indeed working. Anna. Rudder. Looks good. Everything looks good. Nice. Back to the status page. Thanks for following. Welcome to the channel. Perfect timing. We are about to take off. Uh, yes, that's still a big question mark if our takeoff will be, if we'll have enough runway length for the takeoff. We'll see soon enough. Two engines are good. Let's verify that in the electricity page here. There you are. Gen 1 and Gen 2 are on and providing electricity to the bus. So that means we can get rid of the APU now. We can stop it, turn our probe heats on, and we should be good to go. Let's arm the nose wheel steering as well so I can steer on the ground. And with that, we are ready. So let's, uh, we're number one for departure. Let's request for IFR release, which is something that we shouldn't be doing as an airliner. IFR but release runway 17 at Romeo Papa Uniform Tango. We'll let it go. Arm the reversers. You are released for departure. Taxi lights on. Runway 17 after takeoff, turn right to heading 255, then proceed to Delta Yankee Echo Romeo Alpha climb and maintain 4,000 feet. Release for departure void at 042 Zulu advise with alternate intentions no later than 047 Zulu time now is 035 Zulu. Seppo 543 gotcha. release for departure runway 17 right, after takeoff turn right to heading 255 turn and direct Delta Yankee flow. Echo Romeo Alpha climb and maintain 4000 feet. Release Laps for departure eight, void we'll at 042 Zulu. Thankfully, we have Joanna here to read all of that back. Contact us when airborne. We'll go Zepo 543. Alright, looking good. The runway looks clear on the right. On the left, we'll see as we turn more. Let's turn on our strobes here. Also, the landing lights. Yeah, runway looks clear on that side as well. Okay, looking good. 
So after takeoff, we've been instructed to turn right on a 255 heading where we will be intercepting the... Uh, we'll head direct to Diera, the first waypoint in our plan. So that's what the center was telling us. So here we have three green, three white. That's a good indication that we have everything ready. Takeoff config OK, reversers armed in case we need to abort the takeoff and uh, seat belts, no smoking signs are on as well as that manual cross flow. Right, looking good. Just back taxi here to the beginning of the runway. We'll need every length of it. This runway in particular is, I think, 6,000 feet in length, 6,400. I hope that is enough for the CRJ. We will see soon enough. Hey, wheels up. <laughs> Great to hear, man. Glad you managed to join the stream live. How are you? Right. I don't think there is even a proper like turnaround point here in this runway. It's just really a straight through runway. No indications whatsoever. I'm starting to regret why I built an FBO here, but we'll make it work. It does pay a very nice sum of money for that job. Indeed, that still amazes me. That announcement plays on its own and it's able to detect when you are about to take off. The logic that they put in the CRJ with that is amazing. Very nice attention to detail. I guess it somehow detects your distance from runway, the runway you chose in the FMS. And it plays the announcement accordingly. Alright. Let's go ahead and steer the right air. That U turn. Now with the CRJ, interestingly enough, if you put too much of a rudder, if you like put in too much left or right, like the maximum, it stops steering. So you have to be like right close to the edge, but not quite there. Otherwise, you would just go straight and stop turning. There we go, runway 17, looking pretty good. Okay, let's do this. Pushing takeoff mode. Apply forward pressure on the yoke. Engines are stable. Right, let's go to Toga. Alright, there we are. Stay in the center line. Keep one hand on the yoke, one hand on the throttles in case we need to break and abort the takeoff. 80 knots, you can release forward pressure on the yoke. Runway is thinning out, but we are getting close to V1, so I think we will be able to manage this, guys. V1, rotate. Phew, we made it with a lot of runway to spare. Positive rate, gear going up. Awesome. Let's start turning right. So let's turn on heading mode here so that we follow the heading that we were instructed by ATC. Looking good there. Let's go back to the climb detent. Can stay long in that takeoff mode, I imagine. And from here, we will go speed mode as well. 250 knots. Looking good there. And we can go and move the flaps up. Nice. Let's follow the flight director. I'm flying this for the moment. And then we can go to nav mode as we intercept that path. FMS-1 is active now, so there you go. We're now following it to the letter. Pitching for 250 knots. Trimming. That looks pretty good. Let's engage the autopilot here. <laughs> Those flapping arms actually help. What were we clear at? 140? Yes, 140. Yeah, oftentimes I would put the speed limit at uh, the speed indicator, the speed bug at 240 because uh, they're very strict on air it's very strict when you breach the 250 knot uh, just a hair it complains already 
I should have learned from there. Anyway, we'll still get paid, so no worries. We'll make it work. Alright, reversers are now off. Taxi lights can go off in that manual cross flow as well. And we are good. Um, did I not turn that off? There you go. Seat belt signs can also turn off. And now we can go outside. Cover your ears. It's going to get it a bit loud. There it is. Off from Kurigarao. It's a very nice looking river. Beautiful. Over there. All right, looks good. Let's see. Did we miss anything? Did we maybe lose some passengers along the way? <laughs> Hopefully not. Oh uh, yeah. All right, let's have a look at the status. So it will take us around one hour eleven minutes to reach Puerto Princesa. We'll be left with seven thousand five hundred forty pounds of fuel. We have ten thousand currently. Looking pretty good there. Right, crossing 10,000 feet, we can now turn off the landing lights. We can also increase our speed bug to 290 knots. You don't have that 250 knot limitation anymore, and now you see the blinking because transition altitude is 11,000 feet. So we just switch to standard QNH after we cross 11,000. There you go. Sync the heading. And we are looking good. Now this mountain range in front of us, it, this is a very famous mountain range in the Philippines. I don't quite know all the names, but this is a very famous area for hikers. And yes, you get a lot of nice sights there. Because you can imagine the clouds, like you're actually level on the clouds or you're even higher than the clouds. So when you reach those peaks of the mountains, they're actually looking down on the clouds for a change. Quite nice experience from what I've heard. Now for me personally, I don't think it's going to be good for me. <laughs> With all my clumsiness. I have to pull back on the throttles here because we're leveling out at 140. We actually have not been cleared yet for a higher altitude. Oh, because we have not reported in, that's what we forgot. So we'll have to check in. Sepu five four three flight level one four zero. Sepu five four three good morning. Squawk three two six two. Squawk three two six two. Sepu five four three. Ah, that's what we missed. Forgot to turn that on. ATC. There you go. Sepu five four three radar contact. There we are. But they still haven't given us higher clearance. Yikes. Hey, Omisake, thank you for two months, man. How are you doing? Thanks for joining. Mr. Fisty. Thanks, glad to hear it. I am enjoying it too. <laughs> I'm enjoying that we managed to take off at least. So just the lighting a bit. Still a bit manual. We can make it work. Now, can we not be given higher clearance? Uh, can we request climb? Request. Uh, there we go. Maintain flight level 220. Climb and maintain flight level 220. Sepu 543. It's actually quite nice because oftentimes they wouldn't even stop me in my climb. And this is a bit more realistic, right? You get those. Uh, climb and maintain directions 220 and then let's go speed mode in here pitch for 290 knots let's get back into the climb beacon climb and maintain flight level 220 there we go climb detent is indicated there sync the heading bug again and we are off again higher and higher let's power off that efb save a bit of performance those are the mountain ranges thankfully weather isn't as bad anymore weather was pretty bad past couple of days yes that's pilot atc 
with Amazon Poly Voices. Highly recommend it. It's an amazing immersion tool. Especially when comparing with the default ATC at the moment. And yes, of course, VATSIM is the best, but VATSIM has limited availability. Depends who's online, and there's always that uh, uh, socializing factor <laughs> that prevents me from just jumping in. I would always have to ready myself. Not very friendly for introverts. But with Pilot ATC, I can safely and uh, securely go on any flight I want with ATC coverage. Granted, there are some imperfections, but for the most part, it gets you where you need to go and doesn't make you crash into mountains or volcanoes. That chai! <laughs> That's the one. That's the one, yes. Let's turn off track IR here for the moment. There you go. Okay, I can control uh, views with my yoke, so it's a bit more easy on the eyes. <clears throat> for you guys personally, do you have a preference when we are in takeoff and flying? Um, do you prefer having track IR on? Is it okay for you not to dizzying? Or would you prefer it off and staying on this angle so you can... Um, uh, how do you say? Yeah, it's not so uh, confusing. Okay, looks like we're, le we're leveling off again. ATC seems to be not on the job today maybe there's a lot of traffic preventing us from climbing higher so we'll have to pull back again here just okay that's part of the manual stuff that you have to do with the crj no auto throttles on this plane track air is fine as long as you're concerned that's great to hear <clears throat> that's one of my favorite views actually my wallpaper on the left side has that view yeah, i was going through some clouds yesterday and i uh, was in this view and took a photo. Quite nice, quite scenic. Right, so let's wait here. Flight level 220. Let's pull back. Now what I like to do as well is pop up these displays. With some of the recent updates from Microsoft, they've done an amazing job optimizing these WASM modules. Whatever it is that C the CRJ is flying with. So even if it has glass cockpits, the performance has been amazing for me compared with other planes with glass cockpits. So what I like to do is pop these displays out, these three specifically, line them up like so, so that I have a bigger view compared to that minuscule view right there in the main thing. And then I just put that on my other screen so that I would always know when I'm about to stall or uh, overspeed. It's a bit easier to spot. And with the, those panels there, I can actually go more for sightseeing like this. Because I have the panel on the other side anyway. So I, I, I know that I'm not uh, messing things up at least. So we can go for more sightseeing that way too. Alright, Punky. Thanks, man. Appreciate the company. Catch you on Discord and on YouTube. Thanks for support as always. Alright. Oh yeah. What happened? Okay, looking good there. Still haven't given clearance to climb, should be requested specifically. Uh, 220 is actually what they gave us. Oh my goodness, 46 months! Now that guy's old. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> Two more months, goodness, thanks, Alex. 46 months! The time just sails on by. Unsub, unsub! <laughs> oh wow. Wonder which area this is. That looks amazing. There we go. Climb and maintain flight level three zero zero. Just have to be patient about it. Actually, that actually is a lot more realistic, right? Having that kind of um, climbing mechanic, you have to hold. That 
pushing forward on the throttles again. Getting into that climb detent. And the airplane will pitch at 290 knots because we set it to speed mode. Alright, so let's see. Little nav map. We started off in Tugigarao. Uh, where are we now? There. There, there. So this is the river that we're seeing. Luzon River. I didn't even know that there was such a thing. Luzon is the entire region. Like, in the Philippines, we are... How do you say? We have like three main regions. I'm not sure if region is the right term. We have Luzon here at the top. Islands. Three main islands, maybe. <laughs> As Mrs. Clumsy said. So we have Luzon here at the top. We have Visayas in the middle, and we have Mindanao at the bottom here. So three main islands. But I didn't know that there was a, a river named Luzon itself. Quite nice. It's also a Mount Palali here. And the mountain range that I was pointing out to a while ago was this whole area right here. We have Banawirai Terraces. Banawirai Terraces, I think, is one of the... Hmm. Mount Pulag is that one that's very famous for the hiking. Let's see if we can see it from here. Maybe one of those. Maybe that one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was fact-checked. Cool. <clears throat> so flight 300, 300 is what we've currently, we're currently being assigned at. We should be climbing all the way to 380, but that's fine. We can make that work for now. We have some mountains again in front of us. What is that? Quite nice sightseeing from here. The only thing I am wishing more for in the CRJ is to allow to change the volume in the outside. So I like the engine volume in the inside, this level, but outside, it's a bit too loud, isn't it? I hope there's a way to tweak that. Currently in the sim, it's only engine volume and it affects both inside and outside. Oh, nice. Thanks for letting me know, Alex. I'll definitely be buying that too. How much is it? <laughs> Here we go again with the price confusion. I hope he sticks to pounds now just for consistency. Let's go to map 0.74. Zepu 543, climb and maintain flight level 380. Climb and maintain flight level 380, Zepu 543. There we go. We have finally been given our cruising altitude clearance here. 380 climbing at Mach 0.77 now because this plane the advice is to climb at Mach 0.74 but it's as you can see it doesn't follow the speed you set to a T even though I set the speed mode at Mach 0.77 and it says here climb 0.77 we're only at Mach 0.74 so even if you set a Mach 0.77, it only climbs at around 0.74, which is the ideal climbing speed. So that's why I have it set there. And then it automatically changes to that speed at half bank at around 32,000 feet. So you have to be aware of that too. Little quirks of this plane. Four pounds. Oh, same as the ones in ETS-2, right? The Scania... DC-16, the NG thingies, nice, good, so it's cheaper than the ATS ones, which is, I guess, understandable. I guess European trucks are more common in the UK <laughs> than, than US trucks. Excuse me. Less, like, less than a knot's difference in... Oh yeah, that's a good point, Wheels Up. My, the main thing, though, is the CRJ seems to be very sensitive when it comes to the speeds at which you climb. So look at this one. Uh, we're getting even lower here now. Mach 0.73. The problem is, when you set it at Mach 0.74, the, the selected speed, selected Mach, 
then it climbs at a bit lower, like Mach 0.71. And in terms of the speed itself, it's okay. But I'm not sure if this is how it is in the real CRJ as well. But in this plane, in the simulator, when you go below Mach 0.74, you are at serious risk of uh, stalling because your speeds will just continually um, degrade over time and your climb uh, performance will suffer so I think there's like that speed envelope and when you go below Mach 0.74 you're at risk of stalling already and so it will be very hard to climb when you reach those lower speeds so just to be on the safer side I would not want to go below Mach 0.74 or Mach 0.73 as the most minimum, I guess. So yeah, that's my advice because we, we've had a lot of problems before with people stalling during climb, not being able to maintain their, their selected speeds and not being able to climb. That's one of the main reasons because the speed goes low enough that the plane can't climb out anymore. Yeah one of the quirks of the CRJ so never go below Mach 0.7374 if possible during climb hey Lucy how are you doing let's make use of this guy where is that the guy I used a while ago one second let me set it up We have our friend Matthew in here. Hey Lucy. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. Different intonation. Hey Lucy. <laughs> I give up, it's not very lively. Uh, we can live with that. Oh, that's pretty close. We're actually 80 miles from Manila. Maybe we can look at it from there. <laughs> I have a text to speech program, Amazon Poly integrated with the cloud and everything I'm using it for my air traffic control software so that they can speak to me but at the same time I can only use them to say words pretty cool and nice voice con comparing with the default ones yeah it's pretty cool let me sample it here so this is the air traffic control software I'm using pilot to ATC is the name and I can say one sec where is that information and radio check Sapu 543 radio check Sapu 543 you are loud and clear there we go so <laughs> you have different things there so you can assign commands you can say it yourself as well like I can say Cebu 543 radio check Cebu 543 radio check 543 you are loud and clear there you go so sometimes it also recognizes my voice if I try hard enough but that's a bit harder alright where are we cruising altitude almost there let's make sure we climb back up to map point seven four here and then we can lower the throttles out of climb detent arriving at Cabanatuan VOR looks good to me some very low clouds in there nothing to worry about that spinning circle thing has been there the entire stream interesting Alright, there you go, Mach 0.74, pulling back on the throttles, get back to cruise. And in cruise mode, you have those, I'm not sure what you call it, but you have that kind of recommendation, recommended N1 levels. I found that in cruise mode, the best is to stay around 1% below those recommended N1 levels, and that should get us around Mach 0.7576 way above 0.74 for safety so we're not at risk of stalling and leading off speed 
a Deso, yes indeed, still the best airliner out there for me in Microsoft Flight Simulator. <clears throat> really looking forward to the DC-6 though, they say it's going to release this week. Flying Fabio has been streaming it a while ago, looks amazing. And I have not watched Fabio before but it looks like he has an amazing stream, amazing community. I'm planning to watch more of his streams soon and very educational, very entertaining and very clean. That's what's important to me. I don't like the shouting, the very the curse words, you know, those kinds of streams I tend to shy away from. But the community from Fabio looks pretty clean, pretty uh, wholesome, you know, and pretty clean fun and uh, humorous as well. It's exactly the kind of community I, I'm, I'm, I want us to build here, right? <laughs> so uh, that's my idol right there. <laughs> my goal. Very inspiring. CRJ at its finest, yes. So Fabio was streaming the DC6 a while ago. Have you seen one, Alex, in one of those air shows? I would imagine there are a couple of uh, DC3s or DC6 in display. They are very iconic, aren't they? With all those dials and everything. I'm hoping to learn how to fly one of those soon once PMDG releases theirs this week. Just this view alone. I know, right? You want some wing views? Like that. It's maybe like that. Looking out the window. Oh, makes me miss traveling. Or this view. Like so I can even turn on track IR and have those like organic head movements as you're looking around. You can actually see the back of the engine, engine number two, from this view. <laughs> oh, these E3s are still flying commercially? Wow! That is very interesting. We have seen them at air shows. That is pretty cool. Yes, you are more than welcome, Millsup. Sure thing. <clears throat> the guys over at Discord can help you out with setting up FBOs, but sure. I don't think we have a lot, a huge network in Canada yet. What, um, what company uses the DC3? Is it one of those big ones, or is it more, I don't know, used for cargo maybe? It's pretty cool. So we're at Mac 0.77 now at 84% N1 so we can actually afford to pull back on it a bit but maybe just a tad there you go 84.1 they really improved the throttles now though with this recent update before that would have been all over the place and wouldn't be responsive now it's actually following what you are setting up it's very nice 28 miles from Manila. I should actually see the airport from above here, although it wouldn't be very detailed, but cover your ears a bit. Let's go and explore. Should be somewhere in front of us. Might be that one. Yeah, I think it's that one. Oh, one trails. Very nice. Some small regional companies still use the DC-3. Can't kill that plane. The DC-3 has two engines. The DC-6 has four. Not very familiar with either one. I only know them because of Transport Fever. I remember when we were playing Transport Fever and going through the history of the vehicles as we built an airport. We started with those very basic ones and then eventually as the technological advancements came in I think the 19 what 60s 1950s I don't know which years it was uh, released then the DC3 came out the DC6 and that's where I saw it first I have never flown it I have never seen it before so that will be very interesting 
but now seeing the cockpits and the cockpit there the flight deck and everything all those dials and watching the videos the tutorial video videos from pndg i definitely need to watch them a lot more to let them ingrained in my head because those are very very complex even the simple fact of changing your fuel tanks switching the fuel tanks there is there are so many steps involved you can't just like switch <laughs> uh, yeah 1935 oh my goodness that far ahead huh very nice yeah it has a very different flight dynamics from the the these airliners that we've come familiar with i think in particular they have the what do you call it straight wing because th this one what we have right now right the modern airliner design is different the swept wing it's not like a t it's more like a diagonal wing angle the DC-6 and I guess DC-3 has that straight wing kind of layout which I didn't know um, changed a lot of things really made matters different in terms of the flight dynamics and whatnot 7 miles away there it is there's Naia right below with its two runways very cool seeing it from here now my house the house i grew up in should be somewhere i imagine hmm, let's see so that's taal right there i think one second let's get our orientation correctly here okay yes I imagine my house would be somewhere here maybe? Uh, I have to look at the map. Let's have a look at the map here. Alright. Oh, Taal is right in front. That's Laguna Lake that I was seeing. Taal is still in front. So for me, yeah. My house should be right around here somewhere. <laughs> it's pretty nice. There's the eye, sorry. This is Laguna Lake. The volcano. Which uh, semi... Would you say it erupted? It, 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 the uh, alert level increased last year and also this year. It's starting to become active again. Quite scary. Alright, looking good. Modern airline jets, more like commercial jets. What do you mean, this one? If only CRJ was a commercial airline, you don't see CRJ often. Yeah, I think they still have some regional flights with the CRJ. I still see some active flights, especially in the US. We have um, SkyWest. Uh, what is that? Blue something. Yeah, there are some airlines with the CRJ still, but maybe depends on your region. I think in the Philippines, in reality, we never had any CRJs. We might not have reached this point. Alright, let me turn up Navigraph here because we are getting close to our arrival. Let's have a look at where we are. So let's put that in the center. Looks like there's an update for Navigraph, okay. Let's update that. Why not? In the middle of the stream? <laughs> ah, race is the critical map number, I see. Jet blue. I'm not sure if it was jet blue. Um, somewhere in the east coast is where it was flying in. But maybe close enough. Hey Stone Suit, welcome to the stream. So let's load that up. New flight from Simbrief. That's the one that we set up in Simbrief. That's where we are. And uh, 
Arrival will be joining the NOM2 Arrival for the ILS Approach Runway 27 with the Puerto Princesa Transition. So if we overlay that, this guy, and this guy as well, I'm just pinning the charts guys so it's going to be easy to access later on. There you go. Alright, so let's have a look. The arrival first, this one. Gnome 2 arrival is actually pretty straightforward. From the Mike 646 airway, we'll arrive at Nomio and then Dulpa and then Seram and then Puerto Princesa. So we have altitude restrictions here at or above 8,000 at Dulpa, at or above 6,000 at Seram. Those should be reflected in the sim as well. Let's double check. So if you look at legs, uh, Tulpa 8,000 above, Seram 6,000 above. Looks good. All right. And then direct Tulpa, Seram. Okay, so it's planning something in there that we are above 8,000 and above 6,000. It's so planning to be at uh, 12,800 feet. Flight level 128 at Dulpa and 9,000 at Serra. That looks good. And then at Puerto Princesa, right atop the airport itself, it's planned to be at 5,247 feet, which I guess is okay. Because after that, so we end the arrival at Puerto Princesa and we start the approach then, which starts at Puerto Princesa. And then we'll do a... Uh, like a procedure turn in here. Would you call it a procedure turn? But uh, a course reversal maybe. But oftentimes when I fly through here, Pilot to ATC doesn't allow me to execute this uh, turn. They vector me to final eventually. But we'll, we'll still plan for it. But here we see that we should be the VOR at uh, 6,000 feet actually. So that is actually quite low, isn't it? Instead of 5.2. Hmm. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll put in 6,000 over here and over there. Like so. Execute. So when we go to the direct to page, exactly, so uh, it's going to plan that we are at 6,000 at that Puerto Princesa level. Although it seems to have also changed this bit, it now plans that we are exactly at 8 and 6,000 on these two waypoints specifically. I don't think that's correct. Yeah, the vertical navigation of this plane is not yet perfect. You'll have to manually fiddle with it sometimes. So what I'll do is I'll clear those constraints, execute, there you go. So it plans something a bit more gradual, you know, a bit more organic, and uh, I'll just manually manage the altitude constraints. There you go, that's better lighting. Hey, Commissar! Good day! How have you been? Welcome back. Can help stall characteristics too. Ah, I see. So that's why they moved to the swept wing model for the modern airliners. But I guess back then they didn't know that thing yet. They haven't developed yet yet. The thing that I'm really looking forward to is the difference in the performance, the takeoff performance in particular. Based on that video from PMDG, the takeoffs would seem to be very interesting. It has to be a very shallow, very gradual takeoff. It's not like these jets which take off at like 4,000 feet per minute. The DC-6 in particular, and I guess the DC-3 as well. That kind of wing uh, setup has a very gradual takeoff, like 1,000 feet per minute, even less in the beginning. Thanks for following. Welcome to the stream and uh, feel free to say hi in chat. Any mod that changes ATC? 
Yeah, there is no mod that modifies the built-in ATC itself. The best thing I could recommend is trying out a third-party application like what I'm using. That's why I use Pilot ATC and I don't use the default one at all anymore. Because it's just... I gave it a lot of chances as uh, evidenced by some of the videos after sim update 4 was it the latest sim update it got better to be fair but still nowhere near where we want it to be all right let's do some calculations here um i'd like to make a fix at the puerto princesa vor it's papa romeo here we need to be at 6,000 feet there we are at 38,000 right now, so 38,000 minus 6,000 is 32,000, right? So 32,000, remove the zeros, remove the thousands, so we have 32 times 3, so that's 32, 64, 96. So that means we should be 96 miles away from Puerto Princesa when we start our descent. So let's put a circle on the map. And that lands us zoom it out a bit there we go so that's the 96 mile marker and our top of descent is more or less in that range so that gives us a very good indication that we have a nice proper descent path calculated both manually and by the fms very nice i'll take it <clears throat> If the mod is accurate, you'll probably have to watch your CHT and be careful of your cowl flap settings. Oh yes, I think it is, Alex. I think it is. Based on what I've seen in the videos, it, you have to make sure that your cowl flaps are open on the ground. So like to get all of that um, air intake as much as possible. It's going to be very hot in the beginning. Hey, Lucas. Welcome to the stream. 767 or 777? For which sim? <clears throat> I don't think there is a 767 in Microsoft Flight Simulator yet, is there? <clears throat> I'm very excited for it, Alex, because it looks like it has all of the simulations. Engine failures, it even has that, have you heard of it? The harmony? Harmony in the RPMs of the engines. Apparently, those engines have like a certain range in their RPM. When they say harmony, it's really the opposite in my opinion. Like at around, let's say, 1200 to 1500 RPM, the engine shakes violently. So you want to stay as little time in there as possible. When you are... Um, those the, Yes, those are the ones. <laughs> they call it something like harmony. Um, engine harmony, something like that. But it doesn't sound like harmony to me it sounds chaotic <laughs> but yes even those are modeled in so you he, he he demonstrated it and as the rpms reached that range the entire cockpit just started shaking and as he went above that then it started to settle down again harmonic resonance oh you guys are saying the right the right thing there nice so yes, it will be fun to learn about all those things which I know nothing about currently. Very interesting stuff. They, it also has apparently a gyro pilot. It's not an autopilot, it's a gyro pilot. So I think it's a more primitive uh, system than the autopilot. I think it's able to control your pitch and your roll, but it doesn't really like track a heading. Or whatnot, you have to manually do that yourself. It's going to be pretty fun. <clears throat> Although I can imagine pretty mind blowing as well, especially in the beginning. <laughs> uh, but yes, they, they the good thing is they put in this what they call the AFE, the artificial flight engineer, which can take care of all the setups for you. So you don't have to know everything in the beginning. You can get the assistance of the AFE to get you ready for takeoff, ready for descent, and all the phases of flight. Going to be pretty promising. <clears throat> but yes, I, the goal is to really know each and every bit of it. To not need the AFE at all, but I think that's going to be a far away 
goal. <laughs> we won't get there in the first few weeks, I can imagine. But if we get there eventually, that would be great. We are going to Puerto Princesa. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Uh, we have a very lucrative job coming from Tugigarao to Puerto Princesa. <clears throat> and then we'll see if we'll do another commercial flight there or we'll switch to the arrow. Depends on the mood. <clears throat> it would be nice when we fly the DC-6. And uh, it's not only learning about how to fly the plane itself, but also learning how to navigate with those old school avionics. I think it has a very bare bones um, avionics package, like a GNS430 or something like that. But for the most part, I think we will be, will be probably navigating via VOR or something a bit more primitive. I don't know. It would be nice to like a no GPS challenge, you know, <laughs> like in the olden days, pretty cool stuff. Let's have a look back at the FMS here, MFD menu, VNAV, uh, 206 nautical miles till Puerto Princesa and because we removed the constraints just to have a decent flight path we don't really get a good indication in there oh that's fine we'll make it work but yes now you can see the for each of the waypoints the descent is a bit more gradual right? the the descent angle is a bit more gradual yeah they have to Im still improve that i think the calculation of the the vnav path basically 6,000 let's double check the charts here so 2,500 at the final approach fix I would want to be 2,500 by Morix so we have a bit of allowance before we even reach the final approach fix there so let's see if we can make that happen uh, but that's going to be a very steep descent from 6,000 to 2,500 at Morex. But that's what the chart says, right? I mean, if you look at the chart, it's 6,000 there on the VOR and 2,500 at Morex. So that's really what's published. So let's follow that. So 6,000, Morex, 2,500 above, at or above, it, it is not required just have to be above it but personally i would prefer that we be at that level already if we can manage that is so we'll be at 2500 by that point oh that's nice it changed it calculated automatically okay so that means our descent at that part would be quite steep so from 6000 to 25 actually it's not that bad huh not that bad i think we can make it work cool and now that we've set up all these points i think we can actually use vnav we don't have to manually descend because we've set it up here in the fms already ideally we'll see if that works <coughs> cool nomio is coming up ahead that's the start of the arrival nomio is in 146 miles Top of descent is around 80 miles more or less. Looks good. Let's double check the charts here again. Airport elevation, we should be seeing that here. Airport elevation is 66 feet, so we can align our landing elevation there. Maybe 60 feet should be more than enough like that. It's good. So now if you look at landing elevation, it says 60. Uh, cabin attitude is currently 7,100. Difference in pressure is 8.3 from inside the cabin versus outside. 23 degrees cabin temperature, very comfortable. Everything looking good. Fuel at 7,190 at the moment. Nice. Speed's looking good. 
everything looking fine nice all right so we should be getting descent instructions soon they'll probably give us a crossing restriction at nomio they usually do that and then we'll see how the fms adjusts to that restriction but yeah that's what i like with the crj even if it's not perfect yet you do have those calculations in there somewhat you just have to be a bit more finicky about it so at least you're you, you're not starting from zero and you can program something with a little bit more uh, focus a little bit more attention it's not as fuss free but it works other aircrafts don't even have that capability yet of computing a vertical path or programming the fms or having vectors as approaches Now, I'm not sure with the DC-6, I guess it has radio, so it should be able to shoot for a, like an ILS approach. But yes, definitely going to be a lot of reading the manuals. Who knows, we might even have a stream where we just basically read the manual. Read the manual together and learn about the plane. That might be educational for everybody. Might be interesting, huh? We'll see if we can... The no go transition for the ILS approach to runway 27 with the PR1 transition at Puerto Princesa International. After Tokan cleared direct no go. Sounds good. Expect the NOM to arrival with the exactly. no transition have for the ILS approach to runway 27 with the PR1 transition after Tokan cleared direct no go Zepu 543. Because sometimes that changes. Pilot ATC can change it if the weather changes abruptly then it will change your uh, arrival and approach assignment and you get something completely different from what was displayed in the application that catches me off guard sometimes but that's pretty exciting so I like that feature Lockheed Constellation when is that from? is that older or newer than the DC-6? But yeah, I'm really excited for the DC-6 because people are saying, and I hope this is not just hype, but so far it seems like we are now really entering into the study level planes in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's going to be the first ever study level plane. Microsoft Flight Simulator has, uh, ever since its release, been tagged as a casual sim, as a sightseeing simulator, and all the other nicknames that are... Um, not very nice when it comes to simulators and that's understandable because so far we have not had that study level plane that people have been looking for but it seems like with PMDG's upcoming DC-6 release that will all change I even read someone in the forums it's a very catchy phrase it will forever be known as before DC-6 and after DC-6 era because that's like the turning point for Microsoft Flight Simulator at that point, the study level planes became a thing. Big words. <laughs> we'll see if the hype meets the reality, but we'll be there for the journey for sure. 43 to 58. Ah. Does it have those radial engines as well, similar to the DC-6? Is that a big, is, like a, is that like an airliner thing? Or like a, um, a business jet for those days? There we go. Now that we are within 15 miles of top of descent, we get an indication in there. Cool. Airliner for radial engines. You know, I had to Google what the heck a radial engine was. First time I heard about it. Because I, I knew it wasn't a turbine engine. I knew it was a piston engine, right? But here, what the heck is a radial engine? And I saw those star-shaped cylinders. Very interesting. definitely be learning more about that in the coming weeks and yes i expect dc6 to be super expensive my my guess would be around 80 to 100 usd definitely more expensive than the sim because that's the way it's always been for study level planes but i think it's going to be worth it so i am saving up for it <clears throat> 
lots of expenses on the clumsy fund so far so really appreciate your guys support so i can continue exploring this and sharing it with you awesome stuff wow that circle really never stops huh wow up to 109 that's even bigger i guess than the dc6 huh Looks like we got Zephu 543 descend to cross Nomeo at flight level 160, then descend via there you go. to arrival with the Nomeo transition to 6,000 feet QNHS 1012 at Puerto Princesa International. We'll cross Nomeo at flight level 160. So we put in here Nomeo at flight level 160. And if we execute that, if we execute that and that will change our top of descent a bit but not not terribly not enough so that should be fine and if you look at the direct here yeah it doesn't really change the current trajectory much so that's good so we can still follow the top of descent here quite nice <coughs> I I, tr I was watching those videos of how to fly the DC-6 and uh, there are so many steps and that's the simplified version already. It's pretty scary. And the, the pilot, the, the, the guy who was featuring the, 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 I think his name is, was it Rob? Oh, I hope I remembered it right. But he's a real pilot of the DC-3. So he flies DC-3, I think currently still. So I think it corroborates with what you said, Alex, that we still have commercial flights on the DC-3 so it's one of the pilots there he's the one who made the DC-6 videos and he has a lot of insights and he keeps saying oh it's pretty easy to fly this you just do this and this and this and then you do this and this and this but when you add all the this and this and this it becomes one massive thing and that's already with the assistance <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty scary for me but yeah going to be very exciting flat times in the uh, things up ahead Ooh. Let's see how that looks. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. That looks pretty cool. Transworld Airlines. That looks pretty cool. Man, those fins, huh? Three of them. <laughs> Goodness. So I would imagine that was a direct competitor of the DC-6. Maybe. <sighs> Four engines similar era <laughs> goodness Patrick and his bits at it again <laughs> thank you for the bits Patrick you just contributed a huge way to the to the uh, what do you call it to the DC6 fund they were the same era I see I see explain sorry lucas for the super late reply yeah i wouldn't know much about it it largely depends for me if you're still here lucas it it largely depends for me on the developer it's not mainly about if it's if a triple seven or a seven six seven is better it's more if the per, the people who develop this plane in the sim are they reputable have they done a great job that's what i usually go for because it, it makes really a world of difference right even if for example this plane plane a is the best plane out there in reality if the implementation is the same as crap then at the end of the day it will be crap so i really go with the that level <clears throat> that is my thought process usually uh six thousand feet okay good you have the same you've been cleared 6,000 feet by the arrival here following the vertical constraints that we were assigned to all right so let's go VS and go VNAV and let's pull back on the throttle direct page Yep, yeah, looks like we're following the 
path here 2600 feet per minute that's what we see right there well close enough looks nice and then after that we'll be following the path that we aligned initially we can either vs it manually or we can use the vnav for it to follow whatever we put in there ideally so we'll see but for now we stick with vnav nice the finest radial engine ever pratt and whitney r2800 ah i see the constellation does it have a different one i remember from watching the videos that these radial engines are very different and you cannot even go to flight idle because if you go to flight idle if i remember correctly the pilot was saying that the oil the lubrication from the engine like it thins out something along those lines so you get a lot of metal on metal action and that would really be bad for the engines so you cannot go to flight idle you gotta go to idle throttles while on flight that is a very interesting thing thing so i guess the oil is somehow controlled by the engines I don't know the details but that sounds scary like in these descents I often go to flight idle at some point in these uh, jet engines constellation used right R3-3350 <coughs> very interesting stuff actually it makes me want to play transport fever again just to be a bit more aware of the history there it's a very good way very good um, means of learning about history isn't it playing it through the games and sims it's somehow similar to when you're driving for example when someone this is back during the pre-gps era before there was any gps uh, in the cars someone would tell you directions my dad often did that for me he would tell me he would teach me the directions but I never really learned it until I was actually the guy behind the driver's wheel I was the actual I was actually driving to that place and then I learned but when someone was just telling me about it it's not the same it would, it would never stick for me and I think it's the same here like I, I could try and read up on all this history but it doesn't stick as well as when I actually are in that in the simulator in a game that has all of that information the learning experience is just a different level altogether quite nice the R signifies radial ah that makes sense that's the same with VORs as well follow the radial with the R quite nice the number after is the engine cubic inch capacity engine cubic inch capacity A good aircraft museum oh I don't think I've ever gone through through any of those yet yeah I think the closest one I've been to was the one in Switzerland in Lucerne but the the bad thing is when I was there I wasn't into planes at all yet so I saw there is like a, an entire wing there sorry for the pun an entire wing filled with planes in their history but back then it didn't appeal to me yet so I actually didn't read them or maybe I read them but it didn't resonate with me man that's unfortunate just trying to match my speeds here let's go to 290 knots here for the descent start slowing down pulling back on the throttle sure thing freddy happy to have you here farming fs19 nice <laughs> have a good night have a good night excited for fs20 farm sim 2022 is that it? Yeah, looking forward to that okay continue slowing down here let's look outside Oh, 
Puerto Princesa, getting pretty close. 80 miles. There, there. <laughs> Somewhere there. Two thousand five hundred one nine zero. So it looks like we will shallow out the descent a bit once we go past Nomio. That's fine. We can make that work. That actually helps with slowing us down better. Good. Zoom in here a bit. So based on this current trajectory that we have, this current uh, flight path angle, we'll reach 6,000 feet at Seram, which is a bit too early. So that's why after Nomio, we will shallow it out and we'll be at 6,000 right at the Puerto Princesa VOR there. You know what? Let's put in that bearing indicator. And let's put in that DME hold. One second. DME hold right there. 115 decimal 9 that is the Puerto Princesa VOR I believe that's been tuned in already automatically by the system there we go so now we see the DME distance away from the VOR 53 miles from the Puerto Princesa VOR and the direction the needle is saying it's right in front of us so that's exactly what we're expecting nice <coughs> all right QNH is 1012 at the airport. Get that ready for later when we get beyond the transition level. Flight level 130 around these parts. Very nice. Beautiful. All good. Let's plug in some more numbers. Let's get Navigraph back in here. So let's see. ILS straight in landing runway 27. Yes, indeed. ILS uh, decision altitude 231. What's the difference between these two? Let's see. Missed approach climb gradient minimum 2.5%. Aha, okay, so I think it depends on how powerful your climb can be, your plane can handle. Maybe, is that how you read it? Anyway, I just think we should be capable of that. So 231 would be the minimums for this place. So let's set that up here. MDA 231, let's set it at 240, then on the safe side. There you go, so now we should see that the VS is shallowing out. There it is, exactly. And now that arc should be right at Puerto Princesa VOR, perfect. Nice. <clears throat> Look at those clouds guys, looking beautiful right there. Would be fun to fly the arrow here, huh? Mm, getting tempting. We'll see, we'll see. Depends if you have time for one more flight, we'll go with the CRJ. If not, we'll jump we'll jump into the arrow. Depends on what chaps are available when we get there. Contact Puerto Princess approach on one two two decimal zero. Have a good morning. Approach on one two two decimal zero Zepu five four three. Right, so went to flight idle now. Idle throttle, Approach so we slow down. Descending to 6, feet. Zepu 543, good morning. Radar contact. Continue descent via the NOM 2 arrival. For the ILS approach to runway 27 with the PR 1 transition at Puerto Princesa International. Continue descent yep. via the NOM 2 arrival. For the ILS approach to runway 27 with the PR-1 transition, Zepu 543. 
yeah I would want to follow that let's we'll see if ATC gives us that freedom to follow the actual procedure turn in the approach it's looking pretty nice my goodness it's lovely switch to local QNH is uh, 1012 do that for the other side as well getting 240 knots here now that's perfect so we can get back push forward on the throttles a bit so we maintain that speed I'm just looking at my bigger speed tapes here on the other screen so I can see better the 240 knots I'm close there you go that's more like it awesome let's go outside again actually let's go wing view yeah those are pretty scenic you know what let's get track IR in here close that focus on the landing but yeah the performance is much much better on the CRJ not sure if that translates with what you see on the screen as well but for me here in the sim itself performance has been silky smooth so far pretty nice yeah, I'm kind of in the mood to go on the arrow here enjoy Puerto Princesa a bit up close and personal seeing all these beaches on the edges there might have some nice sceneries in view Puerto Princesa coming up ahead 11,000 feet let's get our landing lights on let's uh, turn seat belt signs on get everyone ready for landing zoom in on the MFD now we will see what kind of approach ATC has planned for us 19 miles view or needle still forward pointing forward is it why is that not showing now oh it changed oh it changed because it tuned into the ILS uh, frequency already there it is right on point so the ILS frequency is 110 decimal 1 273 course I have to double check that later because sometimes that course isn't automatically tuned in so I have to manually set that later 110 decimal 1 yeah that looks good there and then 2 3 273 rather on the course my bad so one second let me change uh, nav 2 though I want to put that under the Puerto Princesa VOR 115 decimal 9 and then I'll put the bearing 2 here for VOR 2 there you go so we have visibility of the ILS and also the VOR for uh, in case we need to do a missed approach <laughs> because the missed approach involves some radials from the VOR you can see there those they call it cyan thanks for the follow welcome to the channel and if you're in the mood feel free to say hi oh, man. vectors again that's fine all right so we've been cleared to 4,000 feet continue our descent here I turned off VNAV because uh, VNAV might get confused here let's descend at around 1,500 feet per minute now because we are going to be given vectors to final I can actually switch my nav source to ILS that guy 
Yes, that's perfect. Course is set to 273. That's the one I was uh, trying to get on hand. So it looks like ATC will be lining us up for a final approach here. So we don't have to do the full procedure turn. That's actually a shortcut, so we should be thankful, actually. Thanks, I guess. Fine. Good. <clears throat> Thanks for joining the stream, guys. Hope you have been enjoying so far. We are landing soon. <clears throat> Zepu 543, turn left, heading 125. Heading 125, Zepu 543. 125 it is. But yeah, having Joanna here as co-pilot helps a ton. So I can focus on flying and navigating. Leave the communications with her. So we get the benefit of the ATC comms without getting bogged down with actually talking. Which is how it should be in real life anyway, right? You have two pilots. One would take care of the communications. One would take care of the actual flight. Pilot flying and pilot monitoring kind of thing. Alright, so final approach fix. It's 2,500. Let's close up here. Uh -huh. Now that does seem like an awkward angle. I would expect us to be given more turn left and then loop around here so that we intercept Morex properly. That seems awkward. Not sure what ATC has planned in for us. 125 on the heading. Okay, but uh, we'll, we'll trust them. They know what they're doing. Supposedly, hopefully. Mm, 1000 to go. Let's slow down here to 210 knots so that we are ready to deploy flaps in any, at any possible time. As we capture the, alt capture the altitude, we'll be leveling off and uh, we'll be naturally bleeding off the, some of that speed. That should land me at 210 knots, ideally. Now I wonder what ATC has planned for me here. Interesting. Okay, I can actually see what ATC has planned. If you want a bit of a spoiler, I can show you. Yeah, it looks like we'll be going to the opposite side. We'll be doing like a, a left traffic pattern. Heading 140, Zepu 543. 140 is. those engines back up. Let's not fall below 210 knots. Staying at 4,000 feet here as instructed by ETC. That's okay, that looks good. Zepu 543 turn left heading 004 descend and maintain 3,500 feet. Heading 004 descend and maintain 3,500 feet, Zepu 543. 004 and 3,500. good 100 feet per minute should be more than enough to get us to the altitude that they've assigned us to we lost the localizer too far away from it that's okay it'll come back let's go ahead and arm the reversers already sure not to forget that so we have two green two white in there good indication Right, we have the correct heading. We should be able to see the localizer soon. Once it's back, we can arm the approach. There it is. There we have. There we have it. Capturing the localizer. 
and descending to 2,500 feet. We've intercepted the localizer now, so now the plane is banking left. Looks like we've gone a bit farther to the right than intended. That's okay, no problem there. Okay, looking good. Let's lower that down to 170 knots. Zipu 543QNH is 1012 at Puerto Princesa International Contact Tower on 118 Decimal One. Enjoy. QNH is 1012 Tower on 118 Decimal One. Zipu 543. Good. Peace Tower Zipu 543 indeed. inbound for ILS approach runway 27. Zipu 543, good morning. Radar contact. Continue ILS to runway 27. Call when established on final. Continue ILS to runway 27. We'll call when established on final Zepu 543. All right, looking good. Arriving at 2,500 feet. At the perfect altitude to intercept that glide slope. We have the glide slope two dots above us. That should come in soon enough. So let's start here, as we slow down, get our flap set up, you can see the flaps moving in there, you can actually see it here as well, pretty cool, there we go. Very nice. Light slope one dot away. Let's go ahead and lower the landing gears. Dramatic landing gear extension. Awesome. Let's go to flaps 30 here. Let's set the V speeds. And we will soon be capturing that glide slope. There it is. There it is. GS has been captured. And now we are starting our descent. Alright, let's go to landing flaps. Flaps 45. Good. Now we will report that we are established. Zepu 543 established on final for ILS runway 27. Zepu 543 winds are light and variable cleared to land runway 27. Cleared to land, cleared to nice. land runway 27, Zepu 543. And yes, they still say winds. I don't think I'll ever grow out of that. <clears throat> Radial 110. Ooh. I'm just trying to study the missed approach procedure. Climb 2500 at 600 feet, turn left, heading 065 to intercept and track out to radial 110. 17 DME, oh, okay. Okay. <coughs> Should be clear enough. Looking good, there's the runway in front of us. Shall we... Do we need this? Sometimes this is just confusing me. I think that's better for bad weather. And if it's too bright, it's hard to see anyway. Alright, let's fly here manually. With a bit of hand-flying enjoyment. Looking in front, looking below, making sure we are in the glide slope aligned with localizer speeds not going away from us. Winds are coming from the left, although that seems to be very minimal, thankfully. 
sending a bit too fast here by a bit of throttle looks good bang on the glide slope so far feet back on the rudder pedals if I can reach them there it is right oh it's getting away from me it's okay we can make it work catch up sink rate 300 Sink no rate worries. we'll catch up we'll catch up there we are 100 50 40 30 That's super slow this in 20 Leave that off 10. There you go I'll take it Reversers Apply some brakes No problems breaking through here Should be a pretty lengthy enough runway 60 knots, total reversers And let's continue slowing down And we should be able to make our turn here Hey Tube Thank you. Things are going well. Thank you for asking. Hope the same for you. <coughs> Looking good there. Flight director is going off. Laps going up. Clear of active Zapu 543. Zapu 543, there is no ground control at this airport. Let us know if you need taxi instructions. No need. We can just find the nearest gate. Thank you. Turn off the reversals. Good. Yeah, we have a bit of time left. Let's explore this with the arrow. I would love some GA flying to finish things off, wind things down, and get a bit more relaxed sightseeing environment. Going to grab your vaccine soon. Oh, congrats. Yes, I'm still waiting my turn. Here in Singapore, we will be allowed to register. Hopefully by end of June. Hopefully. We'll see. Glad to hear that you are getting it. It's the way to go. That looks like it. Do we have a marshaller waiting for us? Not really. I can make that work. APU is available already, that's perfect, so that means we can turn off the engines as soon as we arrive right there at that parking spot. Looking good right here. I love this custom made airport. There you go. Nice. Turn off taxi lights, seatbelt signs going off. Looking good there. Turn off the nose wheel steering and now we can turn off the engine. Awesome. Get everybody out. Here it is. Managed to land in one piece, guys. Will you look at that? <coughs> Shot two? It's your second shot already? Oh, congrats. Wow. Happy for you. I hope to be vaccinated soon as well. Okay, good there. Alright, so if you look at on air, then we should have gotten paid quite nicely. Although we did have that penalty because we, beyond, we got beyond 250 knots a bit there. 0.27 percent. But uh, all in all, that was a good flight. We should have earned a lot from that flight actually. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. Let's see. 5.6. Yeah. So as a pilot, we earned quite a lot in there. A huge chunk of the, the profits. We earned 300k. <laughs> Imagine earning that in real life in one flight. 
Goodness. Cool. It's a screen up here. Let's turn off everything that was on before. I love how the packs really turn off, you can hear it. Turn off the APU. Those screens should have turned off, there you go. And now we can actually also turn off the batteries. And that's a done flight. Awesome. 1 hour 22 minutes, add that to the log. Very nice. Right, we have a bit of time left. I want to try out the Turbo Arrow because it's just been updated. I am not really that familiar with the actual updates, but I think overall it's been improved even more. If that's even possible, because the Turbo Arrow is such a nice plane. If I just fly it, it's my favorite GA plane at the moment. So, let's switch modes here. There you go, the Just Flight Arrow, because the Just Flight Arrow has specifically 0% linear controls. That's the recommendation. And for the rudder, we have something for the arrow here. Okay, also at 0. Okay, let's follow that. I wish they would implement that control based on the plane, just like in X-Plane where you have it, your controls, your presets would change depending on the plane that you're flying because that's how it usually goes anyway, right? Let's go arrow. The Turbo Arrow 4 with the OK Man livery. You guys remember that? OK Man, this guy. It's my favorite. Puerto Princesa. Let's start off here. Should be a GA parking right there. Live weather, please. Live traffic. We didn't even encounter a single traffic today, huh? Yesterday, that was much better. Anyway, all good. Right. Turn off pilot to ATC. We don't need that guy anymore. Let's go sightseeing here. A bit more relaxed to cool things down before we end the stream. What I would need, though, is pilot to ATC. So I know where we're going. Right. We can just maybe trace the the shore. Just make our way northbound over to Coron if we can reach that far. We'll see. Hope I remember the procedures, but shouldn't be that intense. <clears throat> it is taking time to load, isn't it? For such a small plane. Maybe some things are are still loading up. I think the the arrow has a wasm as a web assembly module in there, and if so, then that might be rendering. That might be compiling. Every update of the plane with a web assembly module, it needs to compile, is what I understand. That's why the CRJ has like a 10 minute loading time in the beginning, first time you load it, and every update it has, it has that 10 minute load more or less, because it compiles those web assembly modules. Anyway, now we're here, jumping into the arrow, a bit more casual flying. Love this plane. Okay, let's let things load up into the virtual memory. Video memory, rather. Custom airport looks nice. Hey, Dustmatic. They say July 27. That's pretty close now, isn't it? It will be out in Xbox Series X and S, I think. If I remember correctly. Remove the chocks and the tie downs. Stick with the GTN 750 in here. Looking good if I remember the procedure. Turn on the battery. There it is, powering up. Let's leave that open. 
we push the propeller and mixture to full tanks left side that looks good throttles forward around one fourth of an inch and then let's prime the engine looks good all right there we go and let's turn on the anti-collision lights let's turn on everything basically okay just go to for the map here Air prop. Oh, did it hang? It hanged for a bit there. Nice. Man, those sounds are amazing. Pull back on the throttles here. You can hear it coming from the window there, the open window. Turn on the alternator, it starts charging up. Looks pretty good. Alright. Off we go. Wait till you hear those radials. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Super cool. Okay. Controls are... Let's have a look. Free and correct. The back. Can I see my stabilizer? Yeah. It's working. Alright. Save it there. Do we have like a run up area in here? Winds are coming from there, which is the west side. Uh, that's fine. Now what I want to do is... Hmm, so we'll be probably be taking off from this side here. Okay, so I'll have to turn around and taxi back taxi that way. Okay, that's okay. At least the parking brake. Head back in. Well, one thing that I want to check while we're here anyway. One second, it's on the brakes there. They mentioned something about the propeller um, RPM here, the lever. So let's put that to 2000 RPM. Now it drops off suddenly. So before that was really gradual. And when you're testing that, seemed a bit off that's probably what they changed okay cool slow that set it to 2000 rpm let's test the magneto so I'll build over here anyway there should be a slight drop in rpm around 100 there it is that to both looking good check the right side this time there's the drop both and then pull back on the throttle fully see how low the rpm can go should go below 1000 there it is love those sounds hey murica how are you joining we just finished our airliner flight going for a bit of ga flying this time oh don't go into the grass please thank you where is the way towards the runway oh the, the straight in front of us my bad okay The scenery really blends well with the GA planes here. Be too fast, taxiing too fast, a bit in a hurry. Only looks clear. 
Yeah, yesterday, there were so many planes here in Puerto Princesa. There was even one that was hanging out by the runway which wouldn't leave. All those live traffic which apparently are very shy today. Not a silly question at all. Unfortunately not by default. But thankfully there are so many third party applications, some free, some paid. So you can get some kind of economy. We were actually just using one a while ago with the airliner. We have our own uh, virtual airline, clumsy airlines in that one. If you're willing to shell out, it's a subscription basis called On Air, the application. We have our virtual airline where we fly together and uh, build up the company together. We are reaching our 1 billion mark soon in funds. Pretty nice. Yeah, winds are consistent. Coming from the west. So yes, we'll do a runway 27 departure from Puerto Princesa here. Scary name for an airline. Oh, putting the a new definition into clumsy. That's the goal. But maybe we're a bit far away from that still. Right, we don't need any flaps because it's a very long runway. We're almost at mean sea level as well, so no problem with performance there. Alright, turn on our landing lights. Boost pump to low. Love those sounds. <laughs> Alright, off we go. Oh wow, that's very different. That is very different on the throttles. I'm barely more than halfway in my throttles and we are already getting an overboost. Here we are. Oh, finicky rudder. Climb. There we are. That's the kind of takeoff I'm expecting on the DC6. A very gentle, subtle climb. Tap the brakes. Gear up. Very nice. Okay, let's maybe explore these boats here. Full black with the RPM around 2300 should be a nice cruising speed using sound so it's not overly loud and screaming at us. Looking pretty good. So many different boats here. Passenger ferries, some tankers maybe, some cargo ships. Reminds me of transport fever seeing all of this. Quite nice. What does this button do exactly? Exactly. Hey Luna, how are you? Is that a helipad I saw? Oh my goodness, it's been a while, right? Maybe I can get to fly here in a helicopter soon. That would be amazing. Those are helipads, those white circles in the middle of the ship. Yeah. OMG. It doesn't look too level though. It's a bit scary. <laughs> Thanks. Let's complete this turn. Land on it. Maybe on a helicopter, not on a plane. The performance is amazing on this plane. Just 
beautiful. Let's enable that automatic landing gear extension. There we go. Get rid of that flashing thing on the bottom. Just fly over the airport for the views a bit. Let's cross midfield. Beautiful. Right, let's make our way north. Could actually zoom out here, get a bit more. Nice. Enjoy the views. I haven't flown here in quite some time. At this altitude. As detailed as it gets. It definitely feels like the Philippines, like the houses, how they look. Looks legit. Most likely not one is to one, but definitely close enough. Let's climb just a bit more here. Thousand feet per minute should be good. Gonna have flaps, gear is raised. Yeah, all good. There we go, thousand feet. I'll just trim it here. The sounds are a bit different. I'm not sure if I'm just not used to it anymore, but they seem to have been changed too. Not so sure. I am liking it though. Steady purr of the engine. We're in Puerto Princesa in the Philippines. Just finished the flight going here and uh, exploring the rest of the scenery. No actual water masking here unfortunately, so that the beaches don't look as amazing. But we'll make it work. We'll continue looking around, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe there are some areas which are. I barely remember anything here anymore. We went here in... Hmm, oh, I'm not sure when. I was so young then. Maybe I was 10 years old. I don't have any memories about Puerto Princesa anymore. I would want to go back someday though. I'm sure things have gotten so different since then. Probably in a better way. Hopefully. Some clouds there up ahead. Looks scary. This one here though. Completely different picture. Yeah, super smooth, right? The performance is amazing. No stutters whatsoever. Silky smooth right there. Very nice. Yes, hand flying this plane is such an amazing experience. They've done wonders with the flight dynamics for this one. It really just feels as real as it gets from what I can imagine. No fidgety movements, just very organic. Quite nice. Let me check out these mountains. See if we'll find something. There should be a bay on the opposite side of this. Let's see. That one on the right. It's a bit high though, we'll have to climb a bit. We can probably climb. I don't know. 2,000, 3,000 feet. Let's check out the terrain. Let's get some help so we're sure we're not going to crash into anything. Actually, if we follow this route from the east side of the island, we should be mostly 
clear of those yeah that doesn't look too bad huh so you just climb to 1500 no worries luna no worries at all that you managed to make it all right let's continue climbing here 1500 just to be in the safe side there you go back down <sighs> now i really miss flying helicopters i really hope more developers put in helicopters in flight simulator microsoft flight simulator at that the bell 47 is great but it's a bit limited when it comes to what it can do but it gives them the, the purest helicopter experience i guess in its rawest form maybe that's what i should have flown now that's okay we'll get there eventually again hey dundon thanks for joining how are you Puerto Princesa Subterranean River. Ah, now that is a very iconic landmark. One of the tourist destinations. But that being a subterranean river, I doubt we'll be able to see anything from this angle. From this vantage point. Oh look, there's like a house there. Interesting. It's a single house. Snake our way across these clouds. Yeah, the guys behind the H135 are making another one, right? Bayware this time, the H145. Looking forward to that one. Let's see how they improve the feel. Because for some reason, and I wouldn't have any authority on judging this, but for some reason, some of the helicopter, hardcore helicopter fans, they don't like the H135 that much. Like it's good to uh, give awareness uh, that helicopters exist and that they can be fun to fly. But in their opinion, from what I've seen, I think it's very far away from how the real H135 should feel and be like. So I think it's a good starting point, but we have a long way to go in trying to really simulate how helicopters should behave. That being said, they have only praises for the Bell 47 from what I've seen. So at least from that point of view, the Bell 47 behaves exactly as it should. And I'm glad that I learned that helicopter. And I'm sure that when I get back to it, I would be so bad at it again. <laughs> I would have to relearn all of it. But that's okay. That's part of the fun learning and relearning it's a small ferry there would be nice to have this, those uh, float planes in here huh speaking of float planes I, do you guys think there will be they will be adding more of those planes with the floats because when i saw that xbox uh, release announcement they seem to feature that right it was like a... What plane was that? I wasn't familiar what that was. Um, I think it had two engines, but it surely had floats in there. More floats, more fun. Especially around these parts. And called clumsy for nothing. That's true. Very nice this one let's see so further up north so you see that edge there beyond this mountain that's where the subterranean river is probably won't see it but we'll fly over it anyway they also what they have hmm, interesting cleopatra needle 
I think is what they call maybe that mountain interesting name probably has a bit of history in there and looks like there are lots of beaches on the west side okay nice so let's trace through this let's go past that and beyond this mountain beyond the subterranean river there should be beaches up ahead and i'm hoping that we have some water masking in there from some nice views because of course i'm biased i'm filipino but for me the philippines has the best beaches in the entire world it's world class i hope we can see some of that here maybe not in this region specifically actually in this region yes especially in Coron. further up north we have some amazing beaches we've been there before so scenic hey agility thanks for joining welcome back how's it going what have you been busy with these days Are we okay with that height? It's a bit close. It shouldn't be a problem. But we can make it safer if we snake our way through here in between these two little hills. Should be fine. Make sure we don't descend though. Very nice, all these trees. Just makes things a lot more realistic, doesn't it? Comparing when you only mostly have satellite images, which are in this area, unfortunately. Most of the areas in the Philippines, the satellite imagery is nowhere near as good quality as in other parts of the world. So oftentimes when you climb higher up, you only see the uh, you only see the satellite images and it doesn't look that good anymore ox fuel on i forgot to actually turn off that one no wonder okay there you go not the big issue it probably would help i was wondering what that light was Looks like we have a bit of weather up ahead as well, just a little. You can see those green dots there. That's fine, should be good. Right, so the rest of this area should be beaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, there should be an airport where we can land and we can end the stream there. Should be pretty close. RPSV, Romeo Papa Sierra Victor. Let's see if we can plug that in. If we go and go to the menu, home. And we say waypoint info, airport. Enter that in. Hey, Quasar, thank you for subbing. Came out of nowhere, thank you. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Thanks for the support, GG. Make sure to join Discord. So you get the benefits in there as well. Thanks, Alex. So let's go direct to that airport, direct. There you go. So at least we know where it is. And then as we get closer, we can use the OBS function. I remember flying through these, this area before. Looks still as amazing as ever. Yeah, during the beginning of... During the release of Flight Simulator back in August last year. I was flying through this area for sure. There are the beaches, they're starting. There's a bit of water masking in there, but not as much. Let's see, maybe over here we get something better. They're constantly improving the water masking in different parts of the world, but it's a bit of a manual process. Mm. 
the feet okay so that would be a zero four runway zero four let's put it that way this is a marker Looking good here. Yeah, a float plane would be great here, huh? Just land anywhere and just sit beside the beaches. Quite nice. Let's see where we are. We're still quite far away. My goodness, see the number of beaches here, guys. I'll show you. Little nav map. Each of those icons are different beaches. <laughs> Lumindas, Las Cais, Carura, Epalios. All of those. Different establishments, each one, I imagine. Cool. This must be a very famous tourist attraction. Yeah, it's starting to get better over here quite nice a bit more water masking would make it a lot better yeah over here for example like you get those different depths different view and not just like totally blue that's where it starts getting better when you start getting those details cool. yeah those micro islands as well off to the left Is traveling my goodness those were the days huh but it looks like things are turning up not sure how it looks from your end guys but many places are getting better thankfully oh that looks great yeah it's getting pretty good I love it when those watercolors start changing yeah, instead of like the totally dark blue color of the sea the ocean actually get a bit of depth in there with more feeling cool let's go through this area and check if we can handle it first um, might be a bit troublesome if you try to pass through here might need to climb we can probably stretch, squeeze ourselves in there, but it's a bit tight. I think it's better if we just climb. Two thousand feet should be more than enough, I think. And uh, this is just a nice way to cool down after a very serious flight with an airliner following procedures and whatnot just hopping on a general aviation plane and just sightseeing perfect way to end the stream i think that's more like it 2000 yeah that should be enough explore more of those beaches just continue heading northeast should be getting pretty close to the airport now we actually can use the OBS mode in here now let's go OBS and go for a 040 track not that one one second um, No, not that one. OBS is this button. There you go. 040. Alright, that makes more sense. <clears throat> Let's 
getting a bit windy in here. Looks like the down grass from the mountains might be as we get closer to them. Interesting. That's nice. So it's not just flat, static weather. Actually get some variations depending on the landscape. Surfing simulator. <laughs> Don't we have that yet? That would be fun, wouldn't it? Oh, maybe not. I tried to surf before in real life. I tried learning. Um, yeah. Suffice to say, I absolutely sucked at it. I wasn't successful. Just shows my lack of uh, coordination with anything physical. <laughs> not my strong suit. Okay, man, I know, right? Super cool, I love that tail number. Hey, Cornetic. There's their airport, I think. Is that the one? Mm. Not really. 13 miles out. 040. Might be hard to land this way, but we'll try because we have some mountains blocking the way. We'll see. Two thousand feet. Sidewalk surf. That would be a tad easier, I guess. No surfing for me, unfortunately. I tried. No one can say I just didn't at all. Like, I think everyone else in our group managed to surf. Except me and Mrs. Clumsy, maybe. <laughs> Couldn't stand up. Well, we could stand up, but we fell like a second after. Very hard. Which one? The surfing? Yeah. They are there. Is that the one? That one, I think. That strip there. Looks like it. San Vicente. It's a 3,900 foot runway. Looks to be asphalt. So not really like just a dirt strip in there. Looks like a proper airstrip. Nice. We probably cannot expect poppy lights or anything though, but should be good enough. What's that mountain in the distance? Interesting. Some other islands. I'm still amazed how we have a world simulator now available and it's it, it's becoming a true flight simulator with each passing update we'll see how that works right I guess we should start slowing down here boost pumps landing lights slow it down I think the landing gear extension is 133 knots that looks good all right so lowering the landing gear here get some drag in Ooh, that's bumpy yeah <clears throat> the downdrafts from the mountains because the winds are coming from that side that means though runway 04 might not be the best approach for us Hmm, might have to approach from the opposite side here. Yeah, I think that might be best. We'll see. It maybe the winds will change later on. Sometimes the winds do a, like a 180 in this sim. Propeller full. Ooh, that's bumpy. Sometimes 
downdrafts <laughs> yes did it reflect already the bro coins yes really the future i know right such a nice progression in technology Yeah, I was actually supposed to also change it to the Bitcoin logo, but I might get into some trademark problems, so I played it safe. <laughs> yeah, it's a very expensive hobby, that's true. Let's see, so far winds are still coming from our backs from the south over there so I think yeah runway 22 is probably a better for this case let's just join the downwind leg to runway 22 here stay at a thousand feet maybe get a bit of distance from the runway Oh, there are even runway markings I'm impressed I was expecting just like a cement that looks pretty developed nice let's slow it down here winds yes still favoring still from the south Good. slow it down slow it down There we go. First notch of flaps. Start slowing it down. That should be good enough, I think. Probably not asphalt in real life. That might be true, yeah. Might not look that pretty in real life, huh? But imagine. Alright, let's turn 30 degrees here. There it is. Continue our turn. Start descending. About 500 feet per minute would be nice, I guess. It's a bit too sharp. One more notch of flaps. And let's get full flaps here. Oh, that's a bit high. But we can make it. There it is. Just a tad high. Lower the throttle so we descend. right there might be a tad too low now that's okay there it is lead it off lead off the speed there it is yeah I'll take it whoa whoa what's happening with it the winds are... Rudders sometimes still go berserk after landing. And then let's turn off here. Thank you. <laughs> Hold on to your butt. 
Where can we land? I think that guy is waiting for us. Maybe we should have turned off that. Apparently, there's also an asphalt taxiway. So I did not have to go through the dirt. Thank you. Let's open the windows. Let's take that turn. There, that's the guy. Let's give him what he wants. It's pretty cool, right? Where do you want me to go? Here? Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Have it your way. Nice. Awesome. Open the door. Release that latch, and off we go. Quite nice. You did okay, man. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. He looks really happy, yeah. And we gave him his wish to marshal us to parking. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for joining me on the stream. I think we'll end it there. Yeah, almost time. Not too shabby. They're just standing there. Yeah, he, he, I think he's trying to make an impression. Does he want a photo? Okay, fine. I'll get the photo for you. Yeah, there you go. Just for you, bro. Oh, did that take a shot? Not sure if that pushed through. Well, that's the best I could offer. Hope that worked. <laughs> sure thing. Thanks as well for joining. Appreciate it always enjoy these flight sim streams and hopefully by next week we'll be deep into the dc6 dc6 fun no i didn't say anything <laughs> thanks for joining guys clumsy flying give him the tip maybe that's what he's waiting for that's true grab some coins in here epic flight have a good one have a nice day clumsy trucking in two days Clumsy flying for now. Bye-bye. <laughs> I need the rest. Thanks and bye-bye, guys.